From WNDU, your breaking news and weather authority. This is New Center 16 at noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Kate Chapel. Breaking news out of St. Joseph County. Tomorrow it'll be a year since a South Bend toddler was shot dead while playing outside. And today a judge handed down a sentence to the first man convicted for his murder. Robert Griffin was sentenced to 60 years in prison after a jury found him guilty of murder and attempted murder in February. Griffin is one of eight individuals charged in the shooting death of two year old John Swoveland Jr. on April 9th last year. And New Center 16's Trisha Hart has been following this trial and joins us now live in studio. This has been a drawn out process, Trish. Today, finally, justice for the toddler's family. Indeed, it has. Kate, you know, this was supposed to be a sentencing that happened last earlier this month, but Griffin's defense attorney filed a motion to dismiss the second charge of attempted murder, claiming double jeopardy in this case. In court this morning, both the judge and the state recognized the overlap in evidence and backed down from adding additional years for attempted murder. Now, I spoke with the toddler's family. They say at least with this 60 year sentence for murder, there is is justice for John. The judge gave a thorough summary of facts and circumstances surrounding the case. The scene, a group of young men arriving at Coquillard Park with the intent to fight, multiple shots fired, and a two-year-old shot dead hundreds of yards away by a stray bullet. In a compelling summary, the judge pointed to Robert Griffin's character, including a psych evaluation conducted when he was 12, which deemed him narcissistic, angry, manipulative, and assaultive. The combination of Griffin's extensive juvenile record and the age of the victim led Judge Miller to hand down the state's request of a 60 year sentence. When you not so much when you're when you're focused and working, but when you sit back and look at the big picture and you look at the pictures of the child and you can't help as a parent but think about yourself in those circumstances and, and you, you recognize it would be so devastating. When given the chance to speak, Griffin stood by his earlier statements that he didn't shoot that gun. He said, quote, I'm sorry to the family, the baby, and that he himself is a father with children the same age as John Swoveland, adding, quote, I'd probably lose my mind if they got hurt. Now, Griffin does plan to appeal his sentencing. You know, it's been almost a year exactly since that shooting, and we know that where it happened is a pretty popular area in the summer. I mean, we're talking kids and even a school nearby. Both of those considered aggravating circumstances. Adding on to that 60 year sentence, this was one of the maximums he could have gotten. And there was a number of witnesses that were under the age of 18, several of whom testified. And of course, the age of the victim in this case, it was a toddler. So those really contributed to the severity of the punishment in this and, case. And then the trials for some of the other people involved coming up later. Yeah, the next trial will start later this month. All right, Trish, thank you so much for that report. Breaking news out of Middlebury now, where crews are battling a fire at an RV shop. The company RNC Modifications is located on County Road 2 and Greenfield Parkway. Officials say half the building is a total loss, but the back was protected by a firewall. Right now the fire is under control, but crews are still battling hot spots. Fortunately, no one was injured. The cause of the fire is under investigation. For the fourth time in five years, the Irish women's basketball team fell in the national championship game last night, 63 to 53 to arch rival UConn. After the game, Angelo DiCarlo chatted one on one with Irish All-American Jewel Lloyd about falling in the title game yet again. Joined now by Irish All-American Jewel Lloyd. Jewel, uh, how tough is this right now? Yeah, I, I think we're more, um, you know, pissed than, than anything. Um, you know, a lot of us aren't really crying. We're just kind of mad um, at this time. And, um, you know, obviously when you, you get so close and you really want it. So um, we're, we're trying to figure out ways to, you know, get back here next year. When you get this close this many times and you do come up short, how how extra frustrating does that make it as opposed to just if you're here for the first time? Yeah, it gets annoying after a while. You know, um, you, you think you're doing everything right all year round and then you get here and, and still, uh, you know, get defeated. So um, it's just good preparation for years to come. And now the younger players understand how hard it is and understand possession basketball and um, taking shots and, and everything. So that's a learning process for us. You have all your starters back next year. I imagine you are very confident that this team yeah. can win the national championship next year. Yeah, you know, when we have uh, great leaders coming back and everyone now they're experienced uh, you know it helps us just in the learning process and we get help pass the information that we learned this year for an, uh, the freshman coming in. Brianna Turner her second half outstanding uh, bright future there too. Yeah you know sky's the limit for her you know she has a chance to be the best player in the country by far. Um, she's so dominant when she's you know once she learns how to break out of her shell uh, the sky's the limit she's just so talented. 
I know it's tough to look at the positives right now, but when you put this season in perspective, what this team did without a single senior starter, how impressive was it? It's pretty impressive. I mean, a lot of people didn't think we would get to the Final Four. So the fact that we were here and had a chance at an opportunity to win a national championship, you know, that's, that's really good. And um, we're I'm so impressed and proud of our uh, teammates and coaches. Jewel, thank you very much. Great season. Thank you. That's Irish All-American Jewel Lloyd. We'll have much more on the Irish coming up on News Center 16 at 5 and 6 tonight. Well, on to weather now. Another overcast and kind of gloomy out day out there in Michiana. Meteorologist David Harker joins us now with the first word. We're starting to see some breaks in the clouds in some locations, uh, and that's going to help our temperatures, especially later on this afternoon. Some of those locations in the southern portion of our viewing area south of U.S. 30 are the ones that are seeing the sunshine, like Francisville, even down in Rochester, Warsaw coming in at 50 degrees with the sunshine. Cloud cover, though, north of US 6. I think we still could break back out into the sunshine to the north. And not only that, but we're not seeing any rain showers in the immediate area. Although once you zoom out, you notice a couple systems. One that rolled through uh, central Indiana earlier and gave our southern counties some showers and even a couple rumbles of thunder. But it's once off to our uh, south and to our west in northern Missouri. That is the system that could give us some showers and thunderstorms later on in the day. We're certainly going to have to watch that, although the bulk of any severe weather that may make its way in will be a little bit later on into the daytime on uh, Thursday. Let's take a look at our afternoon planner. 56 degrees showing up later this afternoon with a few areas of sunshine. 58, at least closer to the state line. If you're down to the south, you've already reached the 60s. You could still reach uh, into the middle and potentially some upper 60s out there later today. Coming up in your full forecast, I'll explain just how much more rain is in the forecast. And unfortunately, it could last into next week. Kate. All right, thanks a lot, David. Severe storms ripped through southern Indiana yesterday afternoon, leaving behind a trail of damage and hundreds of power outages. High winds are being blamed for causing this semi to flip over on Interstate 69 in Vanderburg County. According to forecasters, winds were as high as 70 miles an hour at one point. The driver did suffer minor injuries in that accident. Meantime, in Warwick County, the strong winds twisted power lines and downed trees. Hundreds of power outages were reported. Areas will remain in the dark as crews work to reset power poles and rebuild transmission lines. Members of a unique mentorship program at Riverside Intermediate School in Plymouth say they're building much more than a doghouse with a group of eager fifth graders. Three Riverside teachers stepped up to mentor a group of boys selected for a little extra guidance. They're building a doghouse to be raffled off with proceeds going to the Marshall County Humane Society. The teachers and students agree that they're also building social skills that are helping the boys to take guidance and work well as a team. We are trying to mentor um, approximately eight boys that we believe uh, has an opportunity to uh, grow as young men and also be able to give back to their community. A lot of times uh, boys need to have someone that they can look up to or talk to and, and feel that, that camaraderie or uh, uh, kinship. These kids are great. They, they thoroughly enjoy it. As a matter of fact, a lot of them look forward to Tuesday after school, you know. So if they, you know, we get them to that point where they look forward to this, then hopefully we can get them to look forward to other things. The group received a grant from the state of Indiana to fund the project. They hope to continue the mentorship project in the future with this group of students helping to mentor the next incoming class. New at noon, Indiana's first business to go on record to say they would not cater a gay wedding will remain closed again today. We contacted the shop's owner after rumors spread this week that Memories Pizza would reopen after shutting its doors on April 1st. The owner says the rumor is false. Benton Harbor schools may soon be looking at more budget cuts. According to our reporting partners at WSJM, the district was hoping for $1.4 million from the Michigan Department of Treasury's Emergency Loan Fund, but the fund is almost out of money. So yesterday, school superintendent Leonard Seawood told the Board of Education they may have to look at more cuts by the end of the year if they don't get that cash. Well, Indiana Pacers forward Chris Copeland and two others are recovering from their injuries after an argument ended in a stabbing outside a New York nightclub. According to New York Daily News, police have arrested the alleged attacker and have also recovered the knife used in the stabbing. Copeland suffered a knife wound to his left elbow and abdomen. He's said to be in stable condition at a New York hospital. We'll be sure to bring you any updates as they become available. 
Making news across the nation now, an unarmed South Carolina man was gunned down by a police officer as he fled a traffic stop, and the confrontation was all caught on video. The video was shot by a bystander and caught the fatal confrontation Saturday. On tape is Officer Michael Slager firing eight shots at Walter Scott as he fled following a traffic stop. Slager made his first court appearance yesterday and is being held without bail. The five-year police veteran says he felt threatened and that Scott tried to grab his stun gun. The family of the 50-year-old victim say they're thankful the tape surfaced. Seven people were killed when a small plane returning from the men's NCAA championship basketball game crashed in an Illinois field. Officials with the FAA say the plane crashed just short of the Bloomington Airport yesterday morning. All seven people on board were pronounced dead at the scene of the crash. At a press conference last night, an official with the NTSB said the investigation is ongoing and that they have yet to determine if weather conditions or the speed of the aircraft were a factor in the crash. Among those killed were Illinois State University's Deputy Director of Athletics, Aaron Leach, as well as Associate Head Coach of the men's basketball team, Tori Ward. A preliminary report into the cause of the crash is expected next week. More to come on New Center 16. Ice cream lovers, beware. Bluebell Creameries is expanding a recall. We'll tell you which flavor and why. Plus, a new study sheds light on connections between anger issues and guns. Why experts hope the findings can put an end to violence. And help is on the way for people struggling with baldness. Hear about a new procedure promising quick results. You're watching WNDU, your breaking news and weather authority. News Center 16 at noon.